Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the Step On Devil Row uh, Show. Where uh, you get news, uh, interviews, yeah, hot topics, yeah. music from around the world, uh, and more. Uh, now here's your host, Step On Devil yeah. Row. Uh, uh, uh. Step On Devil Row Show. Angry Kids 24 7 Radio. We back in the building. Back in the building, my peoples. What's up? Yes. Yeah. Feeling like Jay right now. <laughs> you know, got to get the cough out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, people, welcome to the show. Oh, man, it should be good today. You know why? Because I am here. Yeah, I know. What? What? what this was... Oh, anyway. <laughs> you know why today's a good day? Because we have the return of Football Sundays. And I want to thank all of you who are joining me before your favorite team, you know, plays, and um, I just want to say, uh, go Steelers. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm predicting our Super Bowl this year, as every Steeler fan does every year. We always predict a Super Bowl because, you know, we got to add to that, that, that lovely six, you know what I'm saying, trophies. Anyway, how's my wrestling people been? Did you enjoy this week? You got to watch some uh, pretty good shows, actually, this week, in my opinion. We had some pretty good shows uh, this past week. Excuse me. Um, Ray Raw against Raw's Raw. NXT wasn't bad. You know, their final NXT before it becomes NXT 2.0, as people were saying. Um, uh, Dynamite wasn't bad also. I know. Stefan Devereaux is saying Dynamite wasn't bad. Damn it. I know it's bad, but um, Dynamite wasn't bad. Um, we also had a really good SmackDown episode. You know, that SmackDown episode was incredible. Out of all the shows this past week, I think SmackDown took the cake, in my opinion. But um, anyway, we're going to talk about some stuff here. We're going to get into uh, my opinion of what AEW's next move should be. Yeah, a lot of people were looking at it. And I'm, I'm going to go through a couple of people, some people, some guys, some females, and uh, tell you what they should do, what AEW should do with these individuals. In my opinion, uh, I, I just think that it, if you could tweak a few things, this company could actually um, do what Chris Jericho said. And I laughed at first, but then I started thinking about the roster, and I said, well, damn, <laughs> if you could tweak a few things, maybe he's right. <laughs> maybe they can beat the WWE in the ratings eventually, but we shall see. Um, but my first uh, – you brought CM Punk here, all right? And I think you're – I see what you're trying to do. You know, now it took me about a, a month, but I, I, I think I see what you're trying to do. Um, you want CM Punk to work with the younger guys, try to get the younger guys over. That's cool. No beef there. But I'm just saying, bro, like, you know, I still don't think you should have started out with Darby Allen. I think you should have started out uh, with this, the storyline that I think you're heading, to, you're heading to now, and that's uh, CM Punk versus Team Taz, which I think we should have started that out from day one, start out with some great heels, a great heel in Taz who can talk on a microphone, against a you know a, a great baby face who could talk on a microphone and I can see the promos. I can hear them in my head now. But I still believe that now people are saying Ricky Starks is the guy that should come out of this and take on uh CM Punk. I think CM Punk mentioned him before. I don't like the Hobbs guy just yet. But I believe that CM Punk is the guy. I mean, uh, Ricky Starks is probably the guy you want to do this with. So I can see Taz running his mouth a little bit like he did this past week and just hyping up his guys. And I can see it happening. I mean, it's already happened, but I can see this match happening. I can see it happening, and I can see it making sense. I just, I'm just, i trying to be nice here, people. I'm trying to be nice. That's why I'm, like, holding back here because I'm just like, damn, bro. Come on, man. Why? You know what? And I will tell you why. I will tell you why I'm upset right now. Because, look, let's go directly into Daniel Bryan. 
or Brian Danielson, whatever you want to call him. We're going to come back to see him punk in a second. Let's go back to Brian Danielson. Okay, let's go to Brian Danielson right now. Brian Danielson comes in automatically going after Kenny Omega. Now, look, nothing against Brian Danielson. But, dude, didn't we just seen you lose on the WWE pay-per-view at, uh, called WrestleMania against Roman Reigns? And you was at the bottom of that pal, right, bro? So why, if I, just like Kenny Omega said, it doesn't work like that, bro. It don't work like that here. How? Are, why am I giving you a title shot? Now, granted, same thing with CM Punk. You could say, well, CM Punk don't deserve a shot because he hasn't wrestled in seven years. But guess what? I don't remember seeing him lose. Besides in the UFC, I don't, when was the last time he lost in wrestling? I mean, I, I, I'm lost. Can someone tell me the last time CM Punk lost in professional wrestling? Thank you. You can't remember that either. But my thing is, if it's me, I would have had CM Punk come in there and take on Omega automatically. Brian Danielson, come on, man. Brian Danielson, come on, man. I mean, it just would have been a lot more, it would have been more interesting to me to see CM Punk come in there and go up against the elite. Then you bring in Adam Cole after that, you know, after he comes in there and he he tries to go after Kenny Omega. Then Adam Cole comes in at the next uh, next spot, next pay-per-view, joins the elite. Then CM Punk can possibly go after Adam Cole for a minute. I would be more interested in that because you're going to tell me that Adam Cole versus CM Punk match at NXT or the WWE wouldn't have been great too. So now you have the opportunity to do it now. You could, I mean, like, just think about that. You knew you were getting Cole. You knew you were getting Cole. You could have set it up. CM Punk versus Omega. CM Punk versus Adam Cole. Boom. Versus the elite or vice versa. Maybe have them start off with Darby and then have Adam Cole go after CM Punk. Then it becomes Adam Cole versus Punk. Then after that, then Adam, he beats Adam Cole. Then Adam Cole, then CM Punk goes off to Kenny Omega. But no, you give us Brian Danielson directly versus Kenny Omega. It will only make sense if Kenny Omega goes over in this story. If he beats Brian Danielson, because I'm sorry, there's no way in hell that I'm letting a guy who just got beat at the w, the biggest WWE pay-per-view of the year, WrestleMania, come in there and beat my champion. There's no way. There's no way. You can't be that big of a mark, Tiny Khan. And if you are, I'm very disappointed in you, Mr. Khan. Can't be that big of a mark. So those are two big mistakes that I'm not feeling right now. Simple booking. But let's see what happens. Like I said, if Brian Danielson puts over Kenny Omega, cool. But if he comes in there and wins the championship, as I can see Tony Khan marking out for that. You know you do. You know you can't do. Don't lie. Don't lie. Now, another person I would like to talk about as far as what's next, their direction, a guy who came back after losing to a 50-year-old man, the youngest star in the company. This guy's the youngest star in the company, the hottest heel in the business next to Roman Reigns. And you're going to have MJF come in there after losing to Chris Jericho and put on a clinic on how to draw heat, create heat. This man sat there and put on a clinic. You kids out there who want to become professional wrestlers, sit back and watch some of MJF's promo from this past Wednesday night on how to make you forget that he lost the pay-per-view today, I mean, a couple of days before that. I forgot he lost. I'm serious. I really did. Because when he went out there and laid into the fans and he laid into uh, Brian Pillman's aunt, then laid into the sister a little bit, 
And then you had Brian Pillman Jr. come out and lay it into it. I mean, now, now let me be real with you now. I wasn't too impressed with Brian Pillman Jr. The guy came out, the music hit. Oh, he's looking really hard. He's going trying to get the fans, to, pumping up the fans, too. If a man just sat there and disrespect my aunt, disrespect my sister, okay, I'm not coming out there worrying about if the fans care and love me, or if they care about me or not. Yeah, they're going to care because it's my hometown already. And I'm coming out there to confront you, MJF, after you just sat there and set the place on fire. So why is he out there trying to pump the crowd up? I, I just, I'm lost. Little things, people, little things. He should have walked out from that back, the most serious face ever that we've ever seen with Brian Pillman, not the varsity blonde crap. We should see serious face Brian Pillman. Then he snaps on MJF. That's it. That's it. No, you can all cheer. Hey, hey, please, please cheer for me, even though they're going to cheer for him already. Little things. MJF, where's he going? You know what? I would not mind seeing where they go with the storyline. But we know MJF's going to beat them next week. It's over. Back to the varsity blondes, kid. Still got a long way to go. Yeah. Long way to go, buddy. I mean, we got to go Look. MJF, another one. Top heel in all of wrestling next to Roman Reigns. Who are you going to put him in there with? Don't have him play. Please don't have him face Christian. Don't do nothing like that. Even though the matches would not be bad. They would actually be really good matches. I see that they're possibly trying to turn Wardlow on him. Don't do that. Wardlow's a part of the MJF gimmick. Every little scrummy guy that you walked that walked around school that had some power always had a big guy next to them. That's who MJF reminds me of. The little twerp you want to smack around in the back of the class because he thinks he knows everything because his daddy got money. That's MJF. But he got a homie that he pays to take the beating for him. Usually that homie just delivers beatings. That's Wartlow. Please don't split these guys up. Now, the next two people kind of go together, in my opinion, because they go together outside of eight. <laughs> but Adam Cole and Britt Baker. Now, we'll start with Miss Baker. Yeah, she's cute. She's brutal at the same time. I'll leave it at that because I'm I'm not having Adam Cole come at me, dog. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. I don't want to see Britt Baker versus Ruby Soho. I don't. I don't want to see Britt Baker versus no Japanese schoolgirl chicks. I don't want to see that. I don't. Don't. I want to see Britt Baker take on some bad chicks, some bad some bad bees. You feel what I'm saying? Now, the Thunder Rosa, I didn't like the blood, but it was still a match that was good enough to say, damn, you know, I want to see some more of Britt Baker. I want to see more of Britt Baker after I watched that match. I was just a little turned off with his blood. Now, we could have, well, Awesome Conquers retired. You could bring in Mickey James. Give Britt Baker someone that's going to elevate her. She's not a bad wrestler, but she can get better. Yeah, she can get better. And I just don't want This is a perfect opportunity for Miss Flair. When her contract's up, which it could be up any minute these days because of the way the WWF is messing stuff up with the contracts. WWE, excuse me. Oh, Lord thing you could do with her is put her with the guy who's going to be lost in the shuffle. And that's Adam Cole. Oh, yeah, Adam Cole's going to be lost in the elite shuffle. Oh, you know he is. But what I would like to see happen is Adam Cole creates his version of the elite to splinter her off, and you can have elite versus the elite. His version. See, that's an NWO type situation that can happen, in my opinion. He don't need these guys. He got Brian Danielson. He got CM Punk. 
He got such. He don't need those guys, and they decide to do their NWO gimmick like people are, are begging for. The takeover. Yeah, been there before 25 years ago, buddy. But still, it can happen. I wouldn't mind seeing the two factions, you know, feud. You get Britt Baker in there, man, with Adam Cole, power couple, the real power couple in the business, put Adam Cole, that champion. I can see Adam Cole winning the AEW championship, beating Kenny Omega. I can see it. You, they like doing hills versus hills anyway. I can see a hill versus hill faction. Yes, I can. Fans will get behind behind Adam Cole, though, over Kenny Omega. Just letting you know that. They love Adam Cole, baby. Yeah. But anyway. And also, can they keep Excalibur off of the commentary? He was, man, I'm not, it was just so much, it was just so refreshing. It was just so refreshing. With no Excalibur this past week on Dynamite. Thank you. Keep, keep Taz there. Taz is incredible. My goodness. Anyway, you're listening to the Stephon Devereaux Show, Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. And uh, when we come back, I want to talk about my man, Brock Lesnar. Is he really going to work as a face? <sighs> I don't think so. You're listening to the Stephon Devereaux Show, Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. We'll be right back after this. Saturday. September 18th, Pro Wrestling Express returns to the PWX Community Center, 2125 Beacon Street, McKeesport, PA. Doors open at 6.30, bell time 7 o'clock. Front row tickets, $15 in advance, $20 at the door. General admission, $15. Kids 10 and under, get in for 8. Get your tickets at bit.ly backslash PWX September, and we'll see you there. How to text a guy to keep him interested? Hmm, it's a question many women ask daily. Well, Andy North believes she has found the answer with how to text a guy to keep him interested. It's a new course that she has put together and it's helping ladies all across the world. You can go to how to text a guy to keep him interested dot for more information. Andy says she has the answer, so find out there at how to text a guy to keep him interested dot Recovery from mental and substance use disorders is real. You can recover. It's possible. It happens every day. Never give up on yourself. Discover hope and help. I thought I was too far gone. I wasn't. Join the voices for recovery. The world is a beautiful place again. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral for mental and substance use disorders for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. I'm getting older. Do I need to worry about falling? Yes, you do. Each year, one in four people 65 and older will experience a fall, and many will be serious. The majority of falls happen at home, so remove things that could make you trip and install handrails to keep you steady. To learn more about the steps you can take to help prevent a fall, please talk to your doctor. You can also visit aarpfoundation.org or medicaremadeclear.com slash falls. This message was brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. You're listening to Angry Kids 24 7 Radio. Angry Kids 24 7 Radio. Stephon Devereaux, Stephon Devereaux Show, Angry Kids 24 7 Radio. We are back. Man, look, I'm going to be up front and be real. I am not a fan of face Brock Lesnar, baby face Lesnar. I'm not. I'm just not. I'm not. Can this? I mean, look, I understand why they're doing it. I get it, you know, because they have to. Um, they got to bring him in uh, because they got to bring those ratings up. And they don't, there's no, they can't break Paul Heyman away from Roman Reigns. Uh, because that that's working so well, um, they can't break that up. So, who knows what they did with you know the hurt business? Can you imagine the hurt business versus, versus the bloodline? 
a Survivor Series. Yeah, you know, but they screwed that up so bad. Anyway, that's another story. But um, I look at the positives. Putting them on SmackDown, that's a positive. Even though Raw is suffering right now, Raw is definitely suffering in the ratings. But let's be real. SmackDown is their number one show now, and they need to make SmackDown as strong as possible to keep Fox happy. You know, Fox is cutting the check, too, just like USA, but Fox's money is a little bit different than USA's money. Fox's platform is a little bit different than USA's platform. Let's just be real. Um, So putting them on SmackDown, it made a lot of sense to me. I would have did the same thing. Um, My biggest issue is, like I said, is him being a face. Him being a face. That's my biggest issue. Um, Like, maybe he comes in as a badass, too, as a badass who's trying to take Paul back, you know, or Paul's trying to recruit him. It's just the way that they're doing it. You know what I'm saying? It's just weird. You know, I would have had Paul trying to recruit him to Bloodline, but it is what it is. Then he could, then he could do his. He comes out he, tough he, as he always. You know, then he beats up John Cena after you know when it when it went off the air, talking about the pay per view. Then he comes back out last week on Friday, and he looks tough again, and he reveals some information about Paul Heyman knowing that he was going to be at SummerSlam and blah 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 blah, and you know he was going to take uh, beat Paul Heyman up. Didn't get a chance to because Roman Reigns came back in, attacked him. But who cares? I hate talking about the show detail. <laughs> Bit bad. It just it bores me sometimes, especially this stuff. But um, you know I think SmackDown's a good show, and I like Roman Reigns. He's the man. I acknowledge him. But um, I just I, I'm, I'm not feeling it. The fans like the fans liked it. You know what I'm saying? The fans liked it. But I just thought you could use them a lot better than this, man. I mean, damn. But I, I, it makes sense because it's the most you got nowhere else to go with it. If you're going to put them on SmackDown, I get it. But you could have did this a little bit better, you know. There's thousands of ways of doing this the way better than the way you did it. That's what picks me off. It drives me crazy when you guys do this. WWE. When you want to put on great shows, you prove. You prove this past Friday night you can put on a great show. But there's little tiny things, man. Little tiny things. I want to see Beast Brock Lesnar. I don't want to see Smiling Brock Lesnar. I did like when Paul Heyman introduced him. I did. I think he said a word like he was the advocate, meaning he's done being the advocate now. See, that's money. See, Paul's money. Paul makes you think of the little things. He says something in his promos that makes you think. It draws money. To me, he is the most important piece to this puzzle. Quite frankly, Paul Heyman is the most important piece to this puzzle. Yeah, I believe so. I I mean... uh, I just want to do it a little bit differently. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying. Does, I mean, okay. Does Brock have a better drawing power, power as a heel or face? To me, it's as a heel. He comes in there, he beats the, he, he destroys somebody. You know, the fans don't. See, but you know what, though? Maybe the fans would actually get behind him a little bit more as he, if he's a face, because they know he's only going to be there for eight matches. He signed for eight pay-per-view matches. So maybe behind him as a face a little bit more, because they know at least he'll be around for a while. I don't see it happening! I see this match happening in that Survivor Series, though. They're going to let this thing build for a minute. Please! Please get the slow build. We need a slow build for this. You know, you don't need Brock every week. You know that because you got Roman dealing with other things like, you know, Finn Byler and the Demon or whatever he wants to be today. You know, he's he can be busy. He can stay busy for a minute. We're in, what, September? You got Brock make another appearance in October? Bring him back for the pay-per-view in, in Survivor Series. Or bring him back beginning of November, you know, to set up Survivor Series. Because I don't want to see the match anytime soon. I want to build this thing up. I need to watch this thing build. Give me the big feel. If you're going to do this match, 
which means you take time to let it build. Which it can be. This thing can be a big match if it's done right. Just build it. Build it. Let Paul build this thing. Matter of fact, if I was a WWE, I'll just step out of the way. Hopefully they're doing that now and just let Paul write the whole thing. Because when Paul's focused on his stuff, Paul's a goat. Comes to booking and he's focused on his stuff, he's the goat. When Paul's focused, period, he's the goat. He's proven that already. ECW. I know he has some people around him, but he still had to make the final decision. No different than Mr. Vince McMahon, booking was. But let Paul handle this thing. Let Paul build this thing up. Let Paul make you want to see this match. WWE, let Paul make wrestling fans want to buy this match. You got time. Then you could possibly get a rematch out of it. Maybe Survivor Series? I mean, uh, Royal Rumble? Because this, this, to me, is not a mania match. You got to give the fans, if you really want to keep your fans happy right now, WWE, you got to give them what they want. And they don't want anybody else that's on this roster right now. They want the man who's in Hollywood for WrestleMania versus Roman Reigns. That's the action movie that the fans want to see come April. That's the action movie. That's the box office hit that the fans want to see. They want, they, they're salivating for that trailer. The buildup between The Rock, the people's champ, the great one against your tribal chief, my tribal chief, our tribal chief. Yeah, acknowledge him, Roman Reigns. That's the match people want to see at WrestleMania. They don't care about Brock Lesnar versus our tribal chief, Roman Reigns at Mania. They don't care. Everything else is just a build up to the season finale. It's like power. They build up to that season finale. But the WWF's or WWE, I keep saying F, why? <laughs> WWE, they start building up to their season finale come January, Royal Rumble. They need to see a taste of that trailer. Even if it's The Rock to come out and host WrestleMania or host Royal Rumble or something, just to get the ball rolling, they need that January. But up until then, we're cool with Brock Lesnar. We'll just see what happens. Just, you know, hey, don't like the face turn. Okay, that's cool. We'll have to deal with it. Paul will make it make sense if they're letting Paul do this. Which I believe they are. I believe they are. It's just weird. Because it's, you know, just weird. I don't know, man. I'm just a little, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Because I just don't like the, 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 the face thing. It's not weird. I'm happy Brock is back. Okay, I'm very happy Brock is back. It's just like, come on, man. So hopefully they do what I said. They'll slow build this. Look, we'll let Paul Heyman, you know, run this thing. And they'll slow build this towards Survivor Series. And then we might get a, maybe get a rematch at Royal Rumble. If we can get those two things, I'll be happy. Okay? But what we really want is we don't want no third match at WrestleMania. What we really want and what we really need as wrestling fans people who love to watch this sport is we need The Rock versus Roman Reigns. So we shall see. You listen to the Stephon Devereaux Show, Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, oh, yeah, man, I got some uh, some ideas on the direction of the WWE. It's pretty much what I did in the last segment for AEW. Uh, but I got some ideas for the WWE and where I, where, where I think things are going to change and in the near future. Stephon Devereaux Show, Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. We'll be right back after this break. Saturday, September 18th, Pro Wrestling Express returns to the PWX Community Center, 2125 Beacon Street, McKeesport, PA. 
Doors open at 6.30, bell time 7 o'clock. Front row tickets, $15 in advance, $20 at the door. General admission, $15. Kids 10 and under get in for 8. Get your tickets at bit.ly backslash PWX September and we'll see you there. How to text a guy to keep him interested? Hmm, it's a question many women ask daily. Well, Andy North believes she has found the answer with how to text a guy to keep him interested. It's a new course that she has put together and it's helping ladies all across the world. You can go to how to text a guy to keep him interested dot for more information. Andy says she has the answer, so find out there at how to text a guy to keep him interested dot Recovery from mental and substance use disorders is real. You can recover. It's possible. It happens every day. Never give up on yourself. Discover hope and help. I thought I was too far gone. I wasn't. Join the voices for recovery. The world is a beautiful place again. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral for mental and substance use disorders for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. I'm getting older. Do I need to worry about falling? Yes, you do. Each year, one in four people 65 and older will experience a fall, and many will be serious. The majority of falls happen at home, so remove things that could make you trip and install handrails to keep you steady. To learn more about the steps you can take to help prevent a fall, please talk to your doctor. You can also visit aarpfoundation.org or medicaremadeclear.com slash falls. This message was brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. You're listening to Angry Kids 24 7 Radio. Angry Kids 24 7 Radio. Stefan Devereaux. Stefan Devereaux, show Angry Kids 24 7 Radio. We are back. Man, that was fun. I actually enjoyed that last segment talking about how much I didn't like, <laughs> I disliked Brock Lesnar becoming a face. But it was cool, though, because Brock's one of my favorite guys. I swear. You know, I love Brock Lesnar. Um, but, oh, man, I know, I know. Mick Foley, can you shut up, please? I, I'm reading stuff, you know, you know, got to keep up with the news. But Mick Foley, shut up. Shut up, Mick Foley. Shut up, Mick Foley. And the reason why I'm going to say shut up, Mick Foley, is because, bro, you've been here before with the WWE. You act like this is something new, bro. Keep your mouth shut, bro. Yeah, Mick Foley made some comments about how the AEW is pretty much whatever, dude. And who cares? Who cares? I'm, 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 I don't, I don't need the outsider, you know, telling us, hey, well, blah, 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 blah. look. I sat back and I, I was looking at what the WWE was doing over the past few months and all of their releases, okay. And I wanted to talk about that. To me, to me. My opinion, Vince don't care about letting all of these high-priced guys go because he knows that the guy down in Jacksonville is going to pay these dudes, okay? But take a look at the guys that he's letting go. Now, most of these guys are smaller guys, okay? But the notable ones, Adam Cole, I'm pretty sure if he wanted to keep Adam Cole around, he would have gave Adam Cole a sweeter deal and a little bit more creative over his character. I know that for a fact, okay? He didn't care. Brian Danielson, another smaller guy. Now, Brian is, you know, went out there and openly spoke about how much he loves the WWE and blah, 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 and loves Vince, blah, 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 blah. Cool. I respect that. Thank you for not being a crybaby, whining little biznitch like the other guys are who leaves and cries about them. Um, but another smaller guy with a little bit of injury history, okay? Actually, a lot. CM Punk. Now, do I believe Vince was a believer in CM Punk? He didn't have to be, but Vince did work with CM Punk. He did push CM Punk. Whether he was a believer or not, he still pushed CM Punk. He just didn't believe CM Punk was the guy that he wanted out there, you know, as the face of his company. Hey, it happens. 
but he still pushed CM Punk to the level of champion. He wrestled against some of the biggest names of the company, the history of her business, by the way, and he got over. Vince let that happen. And for the way CM Punk talked about the company, and the way he was very vocal when he left, we remember that. They had a lawsuit and everything, if I'm correct. WWE fired him on his wedding day. I mean, it's cold blooded, but hey, it's business. But to me, Punk was, hey, it is what it is. Braun Strowman. Okay? Braun Strowman, to me, he never got over. The fans, what, 10% of the fans liked him? 20%? Wasn't a lot. I thought James Ellsworth was more over than he was, and Ellsworth they brought Ellsworth in to face Braun Strowman that first night, and Ellsworth got more over than Strowman, and he got a contract. Bingo. Dude has never been over. It was He's never been over. He's just another big guy on a roster. They got a, a bunch of those now, if you've been paying attention. So it is what it is. Bray Wyatt. Now, people have been saying that Bray hasn't been his, his, his self since, you know, Brody Lee died. The gimmick ran its course. They had him burned alive. They had him burned alive on national. I mean, on, on pay per view. Come on, man. What else are you going to do with it? What else? They tried to do the thing with Alexa Bliss, and pretty much, it is what it is now with Alexa. Now, most of these guys are guys I can see. Okay, all right. I see why they let them go. These are no shockers to me. They're talking about Kevin Owens possibly leaving in January, too. Okay, yeah. That's no shocker to me. Most of these guys are indie-rific guys. Guys who was over super on the indies, but they get to the mainstream crowd, and don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that Daniel Bryan didn't get over. I'm not trying to say that he didn't get over. The whole yes movement, he got over. That was organic as hell, okay? That was. But what can you do with a guy who says he wants to wrestle this way but you need him to wrestle the other way because you don't need you don't want serious injury. What can you do with a guy like that? There's nothing you can do. They try to accommodate him. Do you want to go and work for New Japan? Go ahead, do your thing. They try to do everything they but he said that Vince is sometime overprotective. Dude, Vince has watched, has had stars, former superstars under his roster who have died. If he's being overprotective, it's because he cares. It doesn't matter if he cares about his reputation or your well-being, which I believe is both. But still, he cares. So what what have they done? They decided to change some things up once they let these guys go. I'm not even going to count the big show and Christian and Mark Henry because Christian really wasn't under contract. He came back for a one-off, and that was it. Mark Henry and Big Show, they was legend guys, okay? They, what do they got left, really? They got, you know, they can go to another company like AEW and, and help those guys out, the younger guys, behind the scenes and so forth. You can help those guys out because they need help down there, okay? You need agents like that, like Big Show and Mark Henry. I guarantee you no one's going to back talk those dudes because you get some of these indirific guys who go <laughs> – indirific guys, oh, God, I said it. I need to get the T-shirt, but – you get some of these guys who come out and they think that they know the business already. Do you've been in the business for a year, two years, shut up. You're lucky to even be getting a nice deal down here at AEW because of your looks. And you was able to do some nice flips. So be thankful, buddy. But you need guys like that. So I'm not mad about that. I'm not ripping on that. Actually, I'm not, I'm not trying to say I'm mad at anything, but you know, I'm not tripping on that. You know, older guys. That's why I didn't put them in you know, into this conversation. I'm not going to put Chris Jericho in there because he's you know, original AEW guy uh, from, you know, there from day one, so I can't put him in there. Um, of course, I won't put Cody and those guys in there. Especially Cody. Um, original guys. But the guys that the WWE has let go recently, come on, man. Even Buddy Murphy. What else are you going to do with the dude? Now, he's not in AEW yet, but I think yet. Hopefully, guys like Buddy Murphy and Braun Strowman, and, you know, they all go to TNA or Impact. God, what's up with me and these old names today? 
But hopefully they go to Impact. You know, spread this talent out a little bit. Not everybody has to go to AEW. Send some, give me, get a couple of guys in Ring of Honor, too. Not everybody got to go to AEW when they leave the WWE or get cut. But this is what I think the WWE is doing going forward. It's going to be about fresh faces. If you notice, their reports are out. Vince is taking over NXT, and a lot of people are bitching about that. But who cares? It's his company. Let him do whatever he wants to do. It's the same thing I say about, about you know, Tiny Khan. If you're, unless you're a WWE shareholder, which a lot of you marks aren't because you're not smart enough to buy WWE stock, even though you're out here saying, they're going to get sold, they're going to get sold. Buy the stock then. Anyway, I think the WWE is going to restock, reload, rebuild this thing. You're starting from the bottom. If you look at the the few uh, new signees they got, the uh, the Olympic the uh, the Olympic wrestler, oh, his name is escaping me right now. But look, uh, I can't remember. But uh, Rick Steiner's son, you know, he's coming in there to get trained. Rex Steiner, that's his name, Rex Steiner. Then they got this other dude, Parker. Boudreaux. I think they changed his name to Gunner or something by now. But anyway, if these guys stay healthy and if they can get the seasoning that they need, because I think Rex Steiner is going to be just fine because of his family. You know, second generation guys coming there, especially the way he looks, I think he's going to be just fine. And Parker, another guy. These guys got uh, great backgrounds. These are two prospects, two blue chippers, as you know, Jim Ross would say. These guys look look like two blue chip prospects. This could work. It's two guys like that that can change your whole business. Oh, don't believe me? What do you think people were saying when Brock Lesnar, you know, was signed to the WWE developmental? Oh, we knew. I knew. When I first seen the guy. What did you think when you heard that Randy Orton, Bob Orton's, you know, son? Bob Orton Sr.'s grandson, Barry O's nephew. What did you think was going to happen there? Now, you didn't know too much about John Cena. I knew a little bit about Cena. But just off of those two right there, Brock Lesnar and, and Randy Orton, oh, you knew this was the future of the business and ever coming. Because you knew the WWE was going to do everything in their power to make sure that they was getting there and was going to be successful. Look at the the pushes out the gate with those two guys. Same thing with John Cena. Once you seen John Cena on camera down there in OVW, you knew John Cena was money. There was nothing that was going to take away from him being, you know, unless injuries happen, you know, because they do happen. But you knew that nothing was going to happen. Even, I'll even say this. You didn't know how far he would go. You probably just thought he might be just a monster heel. But when he was Leviathan in OVW, you knew he was probably going to get caught up. But you knew he was probably just going to be like, some, hey, he might be this monster heel. No one ever suspect, expected um, Dave Batista to become what he became. You know, now dudes in Hollywood doing movies now. So that's dope. Same thing with the, you know, before that with The Rock. When you've seen The Rock, when you've seen Flex Cavana, you know, in the magazines and on USWA television, oh, man, once he got some seasoning, this kid's going to be something. When he got to the WWE, they gave him a corny gimmick, which was the best thing that could have ever happened to the the dude's career, was that corny gimmick. The whole die, Rocky, die was the best thing that could have ever happened to Rocky's career. Because it gave you The Rock. So when I see guys like Rex Steiner and Parker Boudreaux, when I see those guys, I see potential. I see money. I see a lot of money. Honestly, I do. So when they're letting these guys, the other guys go, who cares? This is what the WWE does. They can recreate, or they can't create new stars. They can't create recreate the old ones. We've seen what they did with Razor and Diesel, the fake ones back in the day. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> but 
But they can create the stars when they want to. They know how to do that. Stop fooling yourself. Stop fooling yourself. When people say, when, oh, they're not creating new, any new stars anymore, and they said that. Fooling yourself to think that they won't when they need to. You know, they got some good guys, Damian Priest now. I think a guy got potential, but I'm sorry, Rex Steiner and Parker Boudreaux just got something right now. Right now. Right now. Damian Priest, to me, is three years down the line. Five years. Guy got everything. But I don't see him headlining WrestleMania right now. Do you? I can see Parker headlining a WrestleMania. I can see Rex headlining a WrestleMania. Don't even know how their microphones are yet. That's crazy. Because I put a lot into their microphones. These guys stay healthy. They're definitely the future. They're actually, they could be the now. I remember the, the Giant, when they discovered the Giant. Dude wasn't even wrestling. Actually, he was wrestling. Uh, oh, oh, my goodness. It's, it's like the Giant was, I think he had maybe one match before he got signed. Because I know he was supposed to get hooked up, you know, with Jim Cornette. And Jim Cornette was going to take him to the WWE. And something happened. And Jim Cornette wasn't able to do it. Uh, because the guy, oh, what was his name? The trainer. He took him to another, and he ended up getting signed somewhere else, WCW. But he, you know, he came out instantly because he was a big guy that fit the role with that they needed at the time. If you're going to tell me that Rex couldn't do that, Parker couldn't do that, especially Rex. Oh, I can see Scott Steiner coming back. I can see Rick Steiner getting a contract. One of those guys coming back. I can see the Steiner brothers coming back, not wrestling, but doing something to introduce Rex, especially Scott. So I think Scott's still performing a little bit. Like, let's be real. I can see it happening. But anyway, so I think that's the WWE's plan. That's where they're going. They're going to restock, man. They're reloading up because they're, you know, they know they're about to go to war. They know that. They see AEW. Okay, you're not going away, guys. Okay, here's some guys. We're going to make this war a little bit fair. We're going to give you some of our top guys, and now you're going to, and it's going to help us get money off our books while we rebuild our roster, restock our 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 developmental, and get some blue chippers down there, season those blue chippers up, and bring them home to the main roster. And you know what that means. Oh yeah, because when they want to do it, they'll build stars. So stop thinking that they don't know how to build stars anymore. They're just waiting. And I think the wait's over. Don't believe me? Hmm. Put some money down. Stephon Devereux Show, Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. And uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about PWX this Saturday night. Yeah, can't wait. PWX Community Center. Yeah, buddy. The CEO speaks. I got an announcement to make uh, concerning the show, and uh, we'll talk about that after this break. Step on Devereux Show, Angry Kids, 24-7 Radio. We'll be right back. Saturday, September 18th, Pro Wrestling Express returns to the PWX Community Center, 2125 Beacon Street, McKeesport, PA. Doors open at 6.30, bell time 7 o'clock. Front row tickets, $15 in advance, $20 at the door. General admission, $15. Kids 10 and under, get in for 8 Get your tickets at bit.ly backslash PWX September, and we'll see you there. You're listening to Angry Kids 24 7. Angry Kids 24 7. How to text a guy to keep him interested? Hmm, it's a question many women ask daily. Well, Amy North believes she has found the answer with how to text a guy to keep him interested. It's a new course that she has put together and it's helping ladies all across the world. You can go to how to text a guy to keep him interested dot weebly dot com for more information. Amy says she has the answer, so find out there at how to text a guy to keep him interested dot weebly dot com. Recovery from mental and substance use disorders is real. You can recover. It's possible. It happens every day. Never give up on yourself. 
discover hope and help. I thought I was too far gone. I wasn't. Join the voices for recovery. The world is a beautiful place again. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral for mental and substance use disorders for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. I'm getting older. Do I need to worry about falling? Yes, you do. Each year, one in four people 65 and older will experience a fall, and many will be serious. The majority of falls happen at home, so remove things that could make you trip and install handrails to keep you steady. To learn more about the steps you can take to help prevent a fall, please talk to your doctor. You can also visit aarpfoundation.org or medicaremadeclear.com slash falls. This message was brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. You're listening to Angry Kids 24 7 Radio. Angry Kids 24 7 Radio. Stephon Devereaux. Stephon Devereaux Show, Angry Kids 24 7 Radio. We're almost done for the day, people. But don't forget this Saturday night. Pro Wrestling uh, excuse me, the Saturday Night Pro Wrestling Express returns to the PWX Community Center, 2125 Beacon Street, McKeesport, PA, 15132. Doors open, 630. Bell time, 7 o'clock. Front row tickets, $15 in advance, $20 at the door. General admission, $15. Kids, 10 and under, get in for 8 bucks. Go to bit.ly backslash PWX September. That's bit.ly backslash PWX September. Fans, got an announcement to make concerning the show. Yeah, okay, so at the last show, uh, I gave an opportunity to a Fight Society member, Warren Bodine. Warren Bodine and his tag team partner, Sinborn, defeated PCS and uh, but it's pop culture sensations and Aaron Connors. And uh, after the match, uh, I gave Warren Bodine a contract. So, got a phone call this past week, and um, I was pretty much, you know, Warren Bodine, and it's, you know, he 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 convinced me, hey, Pav Novak is his tag team partner, you know, best friends. And he think it would be fair, you know, and look, I'm trying to be a fair CEO. If you can help me make money, then I'm going to bring you in. Warren Bodine is one of those guys. That's why he got offered the contract. I, I was very impressed with his match. But I told him, hey, I need to see more of Pav Novak, bro. I need to see more of him. I just can't give him a contract based off of the strength, the strength of you winning a match. He needs to do it on his own now. I need to see him win a match. Now, I know the last match was uh, that Warren, you know, he got his contract. It was uh, a tag team match. Actually, it was 2-1-3. Warren's team only had two people. I don't know what happened with Pav Novak, but it is what it is. So, still gave them the match. Still gave them the opportunity for the contract, even without Pav being there. So, he got his contract. They won a match. He got his contract. Now, with Pav, Pav wrote, if you want a contract, you got to win your match. And as of right now, uh, I haven't heard heard from Pav. Maybe I will. Who knows? But I haven't heard from Pav Novak. And hopefully, you know, he gets back to me within the next couple of days because I told Warren, I told him, if I could find an opponent for him, okay, we'll see. Well, I think I found an opponent for you. You're going to find out at the show. If you accept this offer, if you accept this offer, I believe you will. So we'll we'll see. Also, we got uh my man Superior G is going to be in the building. Yeah, love Superior G. Um, from what I understand, he's taking on Aaron Connors. Jay Rue is going to be in the building, he's taking on Cody Maverick. But I, I'm, in, I'm, I'm interested in this Pav Novak situation. I want to see if he can actually win this match. Sorry, I went back to that. But also we got Raleigh Chambers. He's going to be there. Josh, 
Joshua Kavad, uh, The Collective, Pop Culture Sensations, you're a PWX Tag Team Champions. Bud Cassidy will be in the building. Bud's one of my favorite guys, of course. Yeah, yeah, I guess. You know, watched Bud for 13 years. So I guess he's one of my favorite guys. He's still around. He's entertaining. Makes me laugh. It's the only reason why he got a contract. <laughs> but um, it's going to be a big show this Saturday. I'm hoping I see you there. And uh, don't forget, you can also check out um, the Pro Wrestling Express page on Facebook. That's PWX Pro Wrestling Shows and Training on Facebook. If you want to become a pro wrestler, um, you can email M. Jim W. Miller at AOL.com. If you want to become a pro wrestler, uh, train under Brian Anthony, uh, Brian Anthony, former NWA world champion. He's wrestled for the WWE, wrestled for the w, I mean, ECW. I think he wrestled in WCW for a minute too. Um, but you also, in the school, you get a little help, uh, you know, from Al Snow uh, Wrestling Academy as well, because um, we are with those guys. And uh, it's a pretty uh, pretty special thing to be with Al Snow. Um, I don't know if you heard the interview that I did with Al Snow um, some months back, uh, explaining this new you know, arrangement with PWX and Al Snow's Wrestling Academy. Um, just some cool stuff is going on right now in PWX. Don't forget you're going to have a rally chambers. You know, like I said, he's going to be there defending his championship. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't think, I, I don't know yet. Uh, <laughs> we'll have Sinborn with Lilith. She'll be in a building as well. Um, Chief Thunderbear, he'll be in a building. You know, Chief Thunderbear, he'll be getting it popping there. Um, but yeah, so Saturday, it's going to be a cool, cool show. Uh, bell time again, seven o'clock, get your tickets at bit.ly backslash P W X September. It's going to be a big show. But other than that, wrestling fans, we're about to head out of here. Stefan Devereaux show, angry kids, 24 seven radio. Um, I want to send a shout out real quick to all the fans who's, you know, been doing their thing with us. Appreciate it. You know, don't forget, you can always hit us up on Twitter at Aaron Lester 22, or you can hit me up at stephondevere at gmail.com. Everything's in the description. Um, you know, I just want to thank you again for the support. Don't forget this Saturday night, Pro Wrestling Express returns to the PWX Community Center, 2125 Beacon Street, McKeesport, PA, one five, one three two. Doors open six thirty. Bell time seven o'clock. Front row tickets fifteen dollars in advance. Twenty dollars at the door. General admission fifteen dollars. Kids get in ten and under for eight bucks. Yes, ten and under, eight bucks. And uh, you can go to bit.ly backslash pwx September. All right, guys, we're out. Stefan Devereaux show Angry Kids twenty four seven radio. We'll see you next week. You're listening to Angle Kids 24 7. Angle Kids 24 7. How to text a guy to keep him interested.